today I'm going to talk about all the unusual, surprising uh, things that people think might be uncommon symptoms of the menopause, but actually they're not uncommon. Isn't it interesting that for many years we've been told that the menopause causes hot flushes, night sweats, vaginal dryness. And even actually if you look at the NICE menopause guidance which we work out of, which came out in 2015, they talk about vasomotor symptoms, which are flushes and sweats. They talk about vaginal dryness, they do talk about low mood don't mention any of the other symptoms at all and it's because I think we've forgotten what the menopause means and I've said many times and I will say again that it's not just about our period stopping it's not just about our ovaries not working and not producing eggs it's not about whether we're fertile or not it's about a reduction and changing levels in our hormones our sex hormones which are estradiol progesterone and testosterone and hormones are just chemical messengers. So they go into our bloodstream from the organs they're produced and they go all around our body. Now these hormones, estradiol, progesterone, testosterone, are not just produced from our ovaries. They're also produced in our brains as well. So the menopause isn't just an ovarian problem. And we don't know enough about the brain. We don't know why some people's brains miss their hormones more than others or react more when the hormone levels are changing. So when I talk about menopausal symptoms, I'm also talking about perimenopausal symptoms because peri is the time Time around the menopause and for many of us it can last 10 years or so before our periods actually stop. So many people are getting symptoms but they're not realising they're related to the menopause and actually I see and speak to a lot of women who are perimenopausal but they're still having very regular periods because you can still have reduction or a fluctuation in hormone levels and still have normal periods because our bodies still are producing, if you like, enough hormones to regulate our periods, but not enough for our other organs and bodies to work or other areas in our body rather to work. So we need to be aware of this when we're thinking about symptoms because I've already said many times before that these hormones, estradiol, progesterone and testosterone work all over our body. So every single cell in our body um, responds to these hormones. So they're biologically active. So if you realize that, you'll soon think, hmm, that means we can have symptoms that can affect any area of our body. And I have had a huge number of questions today, which has been wonderful. I have read them all and I've actually grouped them into different organs because um, lots of people have asked lots of questions, but rather than go through every single answer one by one, I've grouped them to the different organs of the body. But unsurprisingly, what well, didn't surprise me, it might surprise you, that most of the people, most people's questions were symptoms related to the brain and I have said before how important our hormones are in our brains and that's no surprise because our brain produces these hormones and so our hormones estradiol progesterone and testosterone work as neurotransmitters so chemicals that allow a, a message from going from one part of the brain to another and we have lots of neurotransmitters in our brains and we know that there are others that you'll probably have heard of like serotonin, dopamine, noradrenaline and these levels change depending on what we're doing but our sex hormones, estradiol, progesterone, testosterone can change the, the um, level of these other neurotransmitters in our, in our brain as well. But more than that, these hormones actually can uh, make the brain more reactive. It can improve the way that we have, um, that we metabolize glucose and obviously glucose is energy. So it can improve the glucose metabolism in our brain. They also improve the um, way the nerves function and even the myelin sheath which is the conduction sheath uh, the, uh, around the nerves these hormones can build it to make the connections actually a lot better a lot faster um, and they can actually um, change the actual um, sort of way the the brain um, it, it's called neuroplasticity so our brain is not a fixed organ. It, it moves and changes all the time depending on how um, much it's working, if you like, and how busy the, the nerve cells are. And so we know if we've got more of the hormones, our brains become more active. Um, there's more chemical reactions going on in the cells and the nerves are firing off and working and, and sending messengers to each other. 
Now, um, you might not think that's relevant to symptoms, but the reason I'm explaining it is because then you might understand more why symptoms occur. And I think when things are happening to our bodies, it's really important to understand why they're happening. It's just not an isolated symptom. It's just not something that happens spontaneously. So a lot of people have um, been asking about memory and poor memory is a very, very common symptom of the perimenopause and menopause. And, you know, it can be quite funny when we find our car keys in the fridge, um, but actually it's not so funny when we can't remember people's names, we can't remember dates, we can't uh, remember to go to meetings, um, and also going to a shop and thinking, I've got no idea what I've come in for, or running upstairs to your bedroom and thinking, what have I come in here for? Oh, go downstairs, try and remember what it is, go upstairs. It's just also scary actually if you haven't got your memory and a lot of people come to us in the clinic really worried that they might have dementia um, and a lot of people explain it's sort of like thinking through treacle you know that it's so, there somewhere in your brain but you're not sure where so reduced memory poor memory especially short-term memory word finding someone said to me a while ago i feel like i monkey chatter i just open my mouth and these words come out but they don't actually make sense so often i'm quiet because i can't predict what I'm going to say and once I start talking I often can't complete a sentence. So these are very common symptoms and if you think about what I was saying about how the brain works and how the nerves uh, react in our, in our brain there's no surprise when we haven't got these hormones. And it's sometimes and quite often difficult to know is it more of an oestrogen deficiency, progesterone deficiency or testosterone deficiency that's causing memory problems and it might be a balance of all three hormones. Uh, quite a few people asked about stress as well and obviously it can be stressful if you haven't got your memory or you've got other symptoms but stress in itself can be very common a lot of people have increased anxiety and they often worry about things that they wouldn't normally worry about and catastrophize um, and worry about little things that just wouldn't be a problem like what am I going to wear tomorrow and is there enough petrol in the car and what happens if my car breaks down on the way to work and what happens if something happens to my children when they're walking to school and it, it just and especially in the early hours of the morning can really be a problem. The other part of our brain that responds really well to hormones is our cerebellum and our cerebellum is like our balance area of our brain so if the cerebellum doesn't work our coordination can be um, disrupted and our balance can be quite difficult and so a lot of people say that they feel more clumsy that they drop things um, that they they just um, have more bruises down their legs a bit like when you're a teenager which unsurprisingly is when we have hormonal changes as well um, and just walk into things and I know I was constantly like just opening a kitchen drawer and it was coming out into me and I wasn't judging like distances um, and um, even easy to burn yourself because you're just not quite so, um, your fine motor skills are not quite as good. And again, this is all about our nerve pathways not being quite as good. So those symptoms can be very common. Some people say that they feel very disorientated and that can be very common actually and I know quite a few people who um, say they can't read maps anymore. They, they, they've driven to work exactly the same for years and then they can't remember how to get to work or if they go to a new place it's a lot more difficult and we're very fortunate now aren't we because we can use our phones or sat nav some of us have got in our cars um, rather than the old-fashioned way when I was younger was having a opening your lap uh, opening a map and then marking down which road to go on but people still find that they can't recognize the way even distinguishing between left and right can be quite more of a challenge for some people um, and some people find that they can't drive as well and a lot of people actually give up driving and certainly my grandmother's generation a lot of those people didn't drive they stopped when they were in their 50s and 60s and I thought it was part of keeping women at home because my grandmother's generation often they didn't work they were the sort of typical 50s housewives and I thought maybe it was just part of that I didn't really think about hormones but there are a lot of people that say that they don't drive anymore but also quite a few people have told me they um, too worried to go into a, a bus or an um, underground or a train um, and part of that is just the way the brain and the processing works. Sometimes people find that they have very intrusive thoughts and one lady said that she's having intrusive thoughts again very similar to after she had her baby. 
Now it doesn't take much when you realise there's a massive hormonal drop, um, a, a level, you know, the level of our hormones drop very quickly after we've had a baby. Exactly the same, we get a drop of hormones when the, during the perimenopause and menopause. So a lot of people who've had dark thoughts or intrusive thoughts or negative thoughts in the past, maybe after having a baby or maybe those days before your periods, they can recur or they might just come for the first time. And it can be very scary when you get thoughts like that and absolutely need to go and talk to someone. But if you think it is related to your hormones, actually say to the healthcare professional that you see, I'm wondering and I think it might be related to my hormones and could I possibly try some hormone replacement therapy as well as if you need any other psychiatric medication because we see a lot of women who have only been given psychiatric medication and no one thinks about their hormones so that's really important. Um, somebody asked about epilepsy and actually we do see quite a few people who have either new onset epilepsy or they've had epilepsy for several years and it's started to become um, harder to control. So they've had more seizures with no other obvious triggers. And obviously our brain, um, the hormones are very anti-inflammatory in our brains as well. Um, and as I've said, they're helping with all the way our nerves work. Um, so no surprise that epilepsy can worsen or occur during the perimenopause and menopause. And having body identical hormones is absolutely safe for people who take anti-epileptic drugs they don't interfere in the way the synthetic hormones can do so it is worth realizing that some people get a reactivation of their ADHD and we've I've done a podcast recently about ADHD we've got a booklet about ADHD some people have a new diagnosis or worsening of symptoms so worth thinking about the way our hormones change in our brain also OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. People find that they um, have more rituals, um, they're more worried about how tidy things are, everything needs to have a place, which can, can be quite good if you're a tidy person, but it can actually take a hold. Um, and a lot of people find that that can worsen when hormones change as well. Vitigo, sort of dizziness, if you like, can be very, very common, not just of heights, but just in general. I've said before, um, standing up quickly, people can feel lightheaded. But often if you're not moving, you can feel the room spinning, which is a really horrible feeling. Some people feel sick with it as well. And again, that's due to the way our nerves work. Tinnitus, that ringing in the ears, again, that's a nerve type thing as well. A lot of um, people also feel very irritable, very angry, very short-tempered, again, related to the way our brain works. Um, quite a few people asked about tiredness and lethargy, feeling sleepy, which is very, very common. Um, even if you're sleeping well at night, you might feel more tired in the day or in the early evening. And I know when I was perimenopausal, I felt like I'd been drugged. Like it's a really horrible feeling. It's sometimes when you're tired, you think, well, I could just go and get over some fresh air, maybe have a drink, something to eat, and I'll just pull myself through it. This tiredness is really difficult. It's like a pathological tiredness. Um, and certainly that's what I experienced and many of my patients experience. Um, and that can be related to hormones, especially testosterone, actually. A lot of people find when they have testosterone back that that tiredness really does improve. Headaches can be very common, worsening migraines as well. So those are the main symptoms that people ask me about related to the brain. So moving down, if you like, in the body, eyes very common so people ask me about eye symptoms and now people can get dry eyes so people who wear contact lenses often find that it's harder to put contact lenses in but you have to be careful actually because dry eyes can lead to watery eyes especially in the cold so a lot of people notice that their eyes water more especially if they go from a warm to a cold environment maybe they go out and get in their car and their eyes are streaming and they might go to an optician or an ophthalmologist and say, no, you've got dry eyes. And you think, how can that happen? But the eyes actually overreact, if you like, um, and produce too much tear, um, uh, too much tears uh, from the glands around the eyes. And we know that estrogen, progesterone, but actually also testosterone. And I was talking to an um, ophthalmologist recently, 
and he was saying the biggest difference he's found in his female patients is adding testosterone um, for, for women and their tears have improved so much more. And we, it's important we produce tears of the right quality and thickness because not only do they get appear when we cry, of course, but it's also they help protect our eye. We need to have our eyes lubricated. Um, and, and so a lot of people find that's a very, very common symptom of the perimenopause or menopause. Um, then um, joints is something that came up a lot as well actually so a lot of people said that they um, uh, noticed that their hands their, or, uh, the hand uh, oh, I'll try again shall I joints in their hands become more swollen and a lot of people find they can't wear rings anymore because because their their actual whole fingers become um, quite swollen especially in the morning joints especially knees can be more painful often worse in the morning actually people find that they find it hard to get out of bed walking down the stairs often people say I feel like an old lady when they get up and that can be related to um, the way our hormones like I said before very anti-inflammatory in our joints so they reduce inflammation but also they help build the synovial fluid which is the fluid that lubricates our joints but also if you think in our like our knee joint is a hinge joint we've got two bones forming a, um, a, a hinge but they're cushioned by cartilage now the cartilage is the soft part around the, the joints and um, our hormones help build cartilage as well and the ligaments um, join the bones to each other from from round the edge if you like and our hormones help the cartilage to keep strong as well so there's a combination of reasons why our, our, our joints can be affected some people get muscle cramps as well. Now that can be due to our circulation, it can be due to the way our muscles work. Um, it can also be due to um, um, just the way that the hormones um, um, feed the blood the 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 blood vessels the blood vessels that go to the um to go to the muscles don't work as well because there's more inflammation in in the inside of the lining of the blood vessels but also our our muscles produce hormones as well if we don't produce them then it, it can not nourish the muscles in the same way so a lot of people find that their muscles shrink and they, they don't um, build as much even if they're doing the same exercise um, and also people find that um, when they do try and exercise their muscles just feel quite stiff so they might be getting cramping but they might be getting stiffness and pain in their muscles as well as their joints and that can be related to the way our hormones work. Also, when we think about pain, our hormones affect our pain receptors in our body as well. And we know that we've known this for many years, that people are more likely to have a heightened response to pain just before their periods, unsurprisingly when hormone levels are low, but also during the perimenopause and menopause. So when you think about something like fibromyalgia, often it can be related to low estrogen, progesterone, and especially testosterone as well, actually. So muscle and joint pains can be very common um, during perimenopause and menopause. And, you know, I, I ran a, a rheumatology clinic. I, I didn't, well, I was a junior doctor, I didn't run it, but I was working with a consultant in a rheumatology clinic in Manchester for six months and saw loads of women loads and loads of women with muscle and joint pains didn't even think about the hormones but if something comes on when periods are changing or women in their 40s or women who are younger who think it might be hormonal we have to think about hormones some people ask about grinding jaw it can be very common if you grind your jaw especially at night time again this can be related to hormones as well Someone asked about plantar fasciitis, um, which is, it can be horrible actually, pain, especially in the heel when you wait there. Very common, especially in the 40s in women, so unsurprisingly can be related to hormones. Frozen shoulder again, when you can't reach up, so you want to put something in the cupboard and it's literally frozen, so you can only get, you get this painful arc really, you can get it this far, but not all the way up. Lots of people go and see orthopaedic consultants, have investigations, have injections, which can help. In fact, I had my shoulder injected, oh, about seven years ago. Funny that, when my hormone levels were changing but didn't realise. So I had it injected, had lots of physiotherapy, only really improved when I started taking HRT with testosterone. Um, I know I'm only one single case, but I've heard and seen this a lot, and we know frozen shoulder is far more common in women. 
So um, muscle and joint pain is very common. Bone pain can be very common as well, actually. A lot of women say at night time, they just really painful bones um, and again that can be related our bones are biologically active they're constantly turning over making new bone breaking down bone uh, producing all sorts of chemicals which help with our calcium um, metabolism in our body as well they use vitamin d so you all need to be taking vitamin d like i've said before um, but bone pain can be really excruciating actually and i know it's related to the hormones because these these symptoms improve when people are on the right dose and type of HRT. Now looking down a bit further in our heart palpitations can be very very common um, and obviously palpitations can be due to other things. Often if people don't have palpitations when they exercise it's a really good thing so palpitations at rest is less worrying than palpitations when you exercise and if you don't have any chest pain or shortness of breath again that's a good thing as well. If you do have palpitations that persist or you're worried about, of course you should get them checked out. But palpitations do often melt away with hormones. And as I've said before, oestrogen and testosterone actually affect the conducting system of our heart. And a lot of people either find that their heart races fast or quite commonly heart misses a beat. And then it catches up and it's that thud that you feel afterwards when it's catching up. But also in our lungs, we have um, the lining of our lungs. The, we've got the, our big trachea, which divides into bronchi. And then we've got bronchioles. That, so if you can imagine the picture of lungs, um, the tubes get smaller and smaller and smaller. And then they end in these alveoli, these tiny, tiny little balloons. And in the balloons, there's blood supply. And that's where the, the oxygen goes into our blood supply and then goes all the way around all our, our body, goes into our heart and then pumped around. But the lining of the um, all these bronchioles, our bronchi and our trachea are lined by cells that, guess what, respond to oestrogen, progesterone and testosterone. Some people find that they become more short of breath. Some people find that they have a wheeze or a cough. Some people find that they have asthma that's new onset that just starts when they're in their 40s or 50s when their hormone level changes. Um, not everybody, but it's something to think about because often uh, uh, respiratory consultants and respiratory doctors and nurses haven't been trained in the menopause, so they might not be thinking um, that any symptom can be related to hormones, and it absolutely can because we know physiologically how important hormones are. Bit further down we've got our bowel and actually our bowel and, and our uh, gastrointestinal system starts from our mouth and ends in our bottom very very long um, but and and all our cells respond to our hormones so if you think about the mouth dry mouth burning mouth um, teeth ch pro problems gum changes can all be related to hormones and then swallowing even some people you can get um, a, a sort of something called globus and it uh, where, where people have swallowing problems and that can be related to a hormonal imbalance heartburn reflux can be very common a lot of women um, are diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome and again i was never taught when i was taught about irritable bowel syndrome i was always taught it's more common in women various treatments increasing fiber looking at diet looking at stress levels even giving antidepressants no one talked to me about hormones. When we give people hormones, not for their irritable bowel syndrome, for all their symptoms and also to improve their future health, um, we notice that irritable bowel symptoms melt away. People might have constipation, they might have diarrhea, they might have bloating. All these symptoms can be very, very common during perimenopause and menopause. And increasingly, as we're monitoring people who are using testosterone, and now we've got people now who've been using testosterone for quite a few years, um, we obviously monitor, make sure their testosterone level is in the normal female range. But testosterone can really melt away a lot of IBS type symptoms, um, especially when it's heartburn or bloating or change in bowel habit. And we know that our hormones um, affect and alter and improve our gut microbes as well. But I've said before, we can't eat our way out of the menopause. So rebalancing our hormones as well as looking at our diet and nutrition, really important. And a lot of people find those symptoms really do improve. Um, 
Thinking about our skin and our hair, our skin, as I've said before, is a really big organ in our body. It's not just about cosmetically what we look like, but our skin is biologically active, lots of, lots of processes going on all the time. A lot of people find that they have itchy skin, they have dry skin, um, and some people have asked about dry feet in particular and itchy feet. Um, some people don't have itchiness all over their body, which you think they would, but it can be isolated Areas. So somebody was asking about an itchy thigh. I don't know why it's particularly the thigh. The itchiness can be due to the dryness of the skin, but it also can be due to the nerve supply not being um, as effective because of the way I've already said our hormones affect the way that our nerves fire off. So it can, you might not feel that your skin's dry, but it might be more related to the nerves, but it also can be related to the blood supply. And our blood supply, it's really good to get oxygen and nutrients to our skin, but also it's very important that any um, sort of, um, any, anything that's produced in the metabolic processes, any waste products, if you like, are drained from our skin as well, back in our venous system to go back through our liver to be purified. So really important um, that it's not just thought about is your skin dry or not. It's also what's your blood supply like to the skin? What's the temperature of your skin? What's the nerve supply like as well? But it's not just the skin, our hair can be affected. A lot of people find that their hair becomes brittle, becomes drier, becomes um, it breaks easier, doesn't grow as well. But also our nails as well. Um, I know um, before I started hormones, my nails were really breaking a lot, really brittle. Um, and, um, and that can be related to our hormones, all three hormones as well. Um, Thinking about the nerve, there are a couple of other symptoms that I didn't mention. Uh, pins and needles in the hands and feet can be very common. Restless legs, especially at night time. And also people can get um, an overwhelming sensitivity to noises. And I know myself, if my daughter is fiddling with like a plastic bottle, or she's tapping on a, uh, a, on a desk, I just go really mad even now. I get really frustrated, but it was a lot worse when I was perimenopausal. Um, and it's just this overwhelming sort of, the oh, you're just overloaded really with, with sensations. So, so hearing noises, some people it's light. Um, also smell as well, our sense of smell can change. Some people find that their tastes change um, and they um, they don't have as delicate sort of taste for spicy foods or, or different foods, but also people find that some smells that wouldn't normally bother them really make them feel very sick. Um, so think about that if you are um, noticing um, changes like either a heightened sense of smell or a reduced sense of smell could be related to your hormones as well. Um, what else were people talking about? Um, the other thing that people mentioned quite a lot was um, symptoms related to the genitourinary system, uh, the genitourinary system. And I've mentioned that before, and I've done an Instagram live all about genitourinary syndrome of the menopause. But specifically, someone asked me about getting up at night time to go for a wee. Very, very common, and that can be related to our hormones. Also having some incontinence, so coughing or sneezing, getting a bit of leakage. Also um, running or jumping, noticing that your pelvic floor isn't quite as strong or noticing that when you need to go to the toilet, you absolutely need to go. You can't carry on your conversation you're having. You need to go straight away to the toilet. And that all can be related to our hormones as well. Somebody asked about a numb vagina. So it's not just that you get pain in the vagina and vulva and surrounding tissues. People often say it's numb, like it's completely, somebody said to me, I feel like I've been paralyzed from the waist downwards. I can't feel anything, good or bad sensation. There's nothing there. And that can be related to our hormones. Um, and I have talked about that before. Quite a few people actually are misdiagnosed as having thrush. And I used to do it as a general practitioner. People would come in and out and I really thought that they had thrush. And then I'd do a swab. If it came back positive for thrush, then I would treat them and their symptoms actually often didn't go away. Or if it was negative, I was taught that you could still have thrush despite having a negative swab. But I didn't think about hormones, like how stupid. So having vaginal hormones, it's different to HRT, can really make a difference. But vaginal um, estrogen can be good. And I've mentioned before, prasterone, which contains testosterone as well. So estrogen and testosterone in a, in a single daily pessary can be very transformational. 
someone asked about pelvic pain so this is pain in the pelvic area that can sometimes people get constantly and it can be really debilitating and really very distressing and I was speaking to someone on Friday who's been given um, amitriptyline at quite high doses which low doses um, can be used as an antidepressant it's not as pure as some of the newer antidepressants we we use now um, and at higher doses it can cause a lot of side effects a lot of drowsiness and a dry mouth sometimes and she'd been given it for her pelvic pain but she'd also had a hysterectomy when she was 42 um, for endometriosis and no one had given her any hormones and so actually having hormones back can really really improve um, pelvic pain so it is worth thinking about hormones as well so they're the most common symptoms. A couple of people or a few people actually asked about bleeding. Last week I did a whole, a whole half an hour about bleeding when people are on HRT or related to perimenopause and menopause. So it's worth having a listen to that. There are quite a few people who still had symptoms despite being on HRT. And I think this is very important to mention very quickly before I finish, because about a third of women who come to see us in our clinic are on HRT, yet they've been told, can't be related to your hormones because you're on HRT. Now, as I've said before many times, that we're all different. So the, the dose and type of HRT that we need is can be different between us and also can be different at different times. So the HRT that I started seven years ago when I was perimenopausal, it's very different to the dose that I use now when I'm menopausal. Um, well, I'm likely to be menopausal. I've still got my ovaries, but I presume they're not working because I'm 53. But when I was 45, I know I was still having some hormonal changes because I, at certain times of the months, I was getting breast tenderness. I was getting worsening migraines. My joints were flaring at certain times. Other times I felt fine and I could feel a pattern to how my symptoms were. And that's a really hard time to start HRT often because you don't know, you're, you're giving a dose and you're trying to top up the deficit and then your body sort of is producing sometimes more hormones than it did before. But when people are menopausal, they're really not producing many or, or, or any hormones at all from their ovaries. And so it's easier to replace, but often you need a higher dose. And also, it's not just the dose isn't about um, what the dose is being prescribed. It's about how it's absorbed through the body. So I use a, a higher dose than other people who have exactly the same estradiol blood levels as me. But I know, and I've said before, my patches crinkle. They don't stick on very well. If I use less than I'm um, prescribed now, then I know that I always get migraines, I feel worse, um, and my blood level really does drop. So we just have to be careful that we're on the right dose. And actually, it's not just about estrogen, it's also about progesterone as well. Even if people have had a hysterectomy, a lot of people respond really well to progesterone. And then obviously the third hormone that I've spoken about before is testosterone. And again, it's important having the right dose and type of testosterone that's absorbed properly to make the difference to improve symptoms. All the symptoms I've mentioned just now can be due to other causes as well. They're not all due to hormones. I would be mad if I thought every single symptom that a woman had was due to her hormones. And I often say to women in the clinic, I have no idea how many of your symptoms are related to your hormones. But what I can do and what I do know is that HRT, body identical HRT, is safe. It has more benefits than risks for the majority of people. And if you'd like to try it, what I can do is give you the right dose and type to achieve what's called a physiological response. So to replace what's missing in the right dose and type for you. It can take more than three months. It can sometimes take a year or so to get the right dose or type. And as I've already mentioned, because our hormones are sometimes changing so much, it can sometimes take longer. But actually, if you start to improve, then we'll soon know which of your symptoms are related to your hormone deficiency or not. And nine times out of 10, most if not all um, symptoms really do improve. But if you find that all your symptoms improve, but you're still having, for example, palpitations, or you're still having pins and needles, then those are the symptoms that need investigating. So obviously reviewing with a healthcare practitioner is really important. Don't just start HRT and then don't go back and see someone for several months or a year. It's really important to have that constant narrative. So we are always assessing symptoms, also looking out for new symptoms that might occur that might be nothing related to hormones. 
And so it's important that we don't just blame every symptom on hormones, but it's also important that we don't ignore hormones when we're thinking about these more unusual symptoms. And I can't say they're uncommon symptoms because the more I see people, the more I learn, and the more I realize they're far more common. And most of the symptoms I've talked about tonight are actually far more common than flushes and sweats. Finally, someone said to me, I feel like the lights have been dimmed. And why is this? And again, that's related to our brains. And lots of people say to me, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm just in 2D rather than 3D, or that everything's in black and white. Everything's not in focus. I feel like I've just been drugged. And it's a really horrible, scary way to, to, to feel especially if you don't know what's going on. Um, and so if any of you are suffering, please don't suffer. Learn more, talk to people, read information, download our free balance app. You can always buy my book. You can always um, um, look on our balance-menopause.com website and seek help from someone who really understands that the menopause and perimenopause is far more than flushes and sweats. So I hope that's been useful. I will post this on my grid. Any comments, questions, if there's any other symptoms that you want me to really focus on in another Instagram Live, then of course I will. Next week I'm going to talk about osteoporosis and bone health, which is really important for everybody, men and women, to understand how common osteoporosis is. Um, so hope that's been useful. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday and see you next week.